Hi everybody, I'm Andrea Ali and in today's video I'm going to share with you some of the common mistakes that that I see a lot of women do with makeup. This is a part two video, you probably saw the first one. Now the difference between this video and the other one is that in the first video I was showing you how the same products can give you totally different results. It was all about the wrong placement of the products. Same products, different results. In this video, we're going to talk about most common mistakes women do about colors. My first video had so much love and it really changed my life. I'm very thankful for those of you who watched that video. After I did that video, I received thousands of emails and messages telling me that the video changed your life, that your makeup game is completely changed. But looking at the comments on that video, so many of you took it so personal when it was just about makeup and we were just having fun. And I'm just being a little, you know, sarcastic, but I have nothing personal with anybody. Before we get into this video, I want to mention a few things. If you are happy with your makeup, if after you're done with your makeup, you're looking at yourself and you're like, damn, I look good, you know? Like, I love what I did. This video is probably not for you unless you wanna have some fun. But if you do your makeup and you're like, there's just something wrong with it, but I don't know what. Maybe you wanna watch this video because it might be for you. You might find out that you're doing some of the mistakes that you didn't even know you're doing. Now please press on that subscribe button and the ring bell button right next to it so you get notified whenever I'm posting a new video. Now if you'd like to see what are the most common mistakes that women do with makeup, please keep on watching. Remember that in my previous video I was telling you that not to prime is a crime? Well, I still didn't change that. But I do want to mention that by priming, it doesn't mean that you have to use a product where it says, you know, primer. You could use your moisturizer as a primer. You could use your SPF. There are some SPF creams, like for example, the Tatcha one, that can act like a really good primer. One thing I wanted to talk about is those primers that are a little bit shimmery you know you we have seen all over instagram like those very beautiful subtle glow kind of a base and you see people applying them and i've seen people applying that product all over the face and then they come with a with a beauty blender and a full coverage foundation and they cover everything I don't see the point of applying that primer if you're coming with a full coverage foundation applied with a beauty blender. So let me show you how to apply foundation when you apply that primer. I'm actually going to apply that shimmery primer all over the face. By the way, I've used the Biteri CC Brightening Serum. You know, see, it gives a little glow to the skin, nothing crazy. Now, you don't want to lose that, right? On my right side, I'm going to show you how to apply the foundation so that it still looks beautiful, you still have that glow, and it looks good in here with a bunch of lights and in the videos and pictures, but also in real life because let's face it, a lot of the videos that we see online, that makeup might not look very good for real, definitely not natural. But before I apply foundation, let's just talk about one of the biggest mistakes that women do, and that is choosing the wrong color. When you have to pick your foundation, you have to think about two things, the tone and the undertone. The tone of a color is light, medium, dark, super dark, etc. Okay, And then the undertone is the hidden color. The easiest way to see which undertone you are is just look at your veins and if they are green, it means you are a yellow undertone. If they are blue, it means you are more of a cool tone. If you look at your veins and you're like, oh, I don't know what color, like I'm I cannot tell. It probably means that you're a neutral undertone. So you're a mix of both. So just look in, your, in the mirror when you have nothing on and just take a good look at your skin, especially shoulders, the chest, you know, not necessarily the neck. I feel like the neck is a little bit lighter all the time. I always tell my clients, you should take the color from your shoulders and your chest and bring it up. I took three foundations from the Dior Backstage collection. All of them have the same tone, meaning that they have the same 
level of intensity, but they have different undertone. And I'm going to show you a wrong color on my left side. It's the right tone, but the wrong undertone. And I'm going to apply it with a beauty blender and you're going to see how it's going to cover all this beautiful uh, sheen that, I, that we got from the primer. I am number three from Dior. So I'm applying this with a beauty sponge. This is in 3C. And you know the, the, the weird thing about it is that if I would do my makeup in the bathroom um, with, you know, artificial light, this color would not even be that bad. But guys, this is literally gray. And like I said, not only that I've picked a wrong color, but that primer that I've applied, you know, it's for nothing because it's, it's not helping me at all. I'm kind of gray. And there's no sheen going on. There's no real skin going on. And let me show you how I would apply the right color and the right amount of foundation on the good side. I have a warm olive undertone. What does that mean? That my skin is a little bit green. It has a, just a tiny pinch of olive tone to it. Now, it's hard for me to find the right color foundation, but I find that the Dior Backstage really has the right color for me, which is three warm olive so this is the name of this foundation 3wo let me show you how it looks like compared with the other one i'm going to put it right here and then blend it with my finger so you can see it just disappears that's what you want from a foundation when it's a good balance between your face, your neck, and your chest, we have a winner. I'm going to dot the foundation all over the face, then come with a Morphe G36 brush and buff this foundation into the skin. I'm also taking it down the neck. You don't want to have this line like in here. Sometimes we're desperate to hide those dark circles and we think that a lighter concealer and a very thick one is going to solve the problem. If you're going to apply a light concealer on a surface that has a little bit of a purple color, you're going to get a gray result. Add a product that has huge coverage and that's it. The lighter color and then a huge amount of product applied in the in a triangle shape. Let's face it, we saw this. Now you come with a beauty blender and you blend everything. Another mistake is to take your concealer really really close to those lashes like right here there is no point to do that guys you know why so first of all that's where you have most of your fine lines that's where you have a lot of movement the more product you're going to apply in there the more it's going to crease and besides that i think it's just a personal opinion i think that the shadow that we have like right under the lash line it's actually beautiful and makes the eyes look a little bit bigger. What's left on your beauty blender, you would apply it on the eyelids as a base. Now, I use concealer on the eyelids as well, but when I say what's left on my beauty blender, I usually mean like just a tiny little bit. I find this is a little cartoonish, so I'll take it down a little bit. I still want to make it look, you know, real like I actually saw on people. Now let me show you the right color concealer that I would pick on the good side. I'm going to use the same product but just a different color. So I'm applying it under my eyes. The place where you want to have the concealer is where you need it, okay? You have darkness under your eyes, like usually you would have it right here, okay? That's where we are a little purple. You can use your fingers to apply your concealer. Another place where I know that most women are a little red or a little purple, it's at the end of your eye. If you apply a tiny little bit of concealer in there, it's going to make a huge difference. It's going to lift the eyes a little bit and it, it will also make you look more rested. Now, for this side, I'm going to use a brush. Now what's left on my brush, I'll apply it on the eyelids. Now check this out. 
Now we need to set the makeup in place. I have nothing against baking. I think that is a technique. Amazing. If you're a performer, if you're a singer, if you're an actor, I did baking on myself. To be completely honest with you, it looks really bad for real. At daylight, unless your skin is like super tight and you're like 16, baking is not gonna make you look good. One mistake that some women could do is using a very light powder under the eyes, thinking that, you know, it's just gonna brighten up that area. This is the Secret Brightening Powder and it's a white powder that is beautiful if you use it in a very, very small quantity. If you're going to apply it, like even this amount, okay? Let me show you how this powder is going to look like with this amount only. And of course, when you're doing your powder, you just applying like this, right? It did brighten up the area, but, but it just emphasized the wrinkles. I would much rather use a translucent powder, and I'll use the same brush, but let me show you how you should apply your powder without looking cakey, but still having that longevity and that matte finish, of course, if you're looking for that. So I take about this amount of powder, I press it into the bristles of my brush. I make sure there is no product that creased. If you are going to set your under eyes while well, having the product in those wrinkles, they're gonna look super bad. You wanna do very small pressing motions in the area where you want to mattify, you wanna set the makeup. What's left on my brush, I set the rest of the face as well. Not setting the rest of your face will give you this problem. Let me show you in the next step. So now we want a bronze. You really want to have that JLo bronzy look. And you're probably thinking that the darker, the better. So I'm just gonna take this uh, Kat Von D palette. I'll take this color right here to really give the face some dimension. And I take the product like this, okay? And I don't take the excess off and I go straight on my face and I do this, right? This is what we learn from all the magazines, from even from makeup artists, sucking on the cheeks. And most women start from here, okay? Okay, you start from here and you, now you're scared because it's too much, right? So you're gonna think, okay, now I, now I need to like spread it all over so that, you know, it's not as bad. And then you learned about the three and nobody actually told you where the three should be positioned, right? So you go here and then here, right? Let me explain to you why you should not do this. The purpose of the contour is to put the shadow in the right place. So for example, your cheek bones look a little bit higher. Another reason why you want to use contour is to maybe slim down your nose. When you are doing this, your cheek is dropping to here. But if I actually touch my cheek, I feel that my bone is up here. Okay, this is where my bone is. Putting the shadow in here it does not help me at all. It actually makes my cheekbone drop. So this is not only an absolute horrible color for me, although you might not see it in the video, but I promise you, for real it is, but it's also a very wrong place. And I know I said this in my last video. Now let me show you what the right color that I would use in a right technique, okay? I have a small face. If I really want to contour to shape my face, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. This is a good brush for powder, but this is not a good brush for the contour, okay? Because you have no precision with this. Now, if I really want to give my face a little bit of dimension, make it look a bit, you know, bronzy, I would use this color. That is not much darker than my, actually, than my actual skin color. I would just take the excess off. You could just do like this. I'm starting with the hairline. Why? Because you want to apply most of the color in here. So you're starting from here. 
Now, can we agree that this is much more natural? The colors suit me better. It's not a huge difference between my skin tone and the and the bronzer that I have applied in here. Then, if you want to apply it on the forehead, make sure you apply it very very close to that hairline. Now, let's talk about blush. Blush can make you look like you just had a run, like it gives you a very playful, a very youthful look. But when it's the wrong color and also the wrong placement, it can make you look like a clown. And I'll show you some of the colors like these. They look so pretty, right? I mean, look at them. They're all so pretty. They're all from Laura Mercier. Most women want to have that rosy cheek. So I'll just gonna, I'm just gonna pick this one. When you're picking your blush brush, also think about the fact that do I have a tiny face? Do I have a big face? You know, I'm a tiny woman. I have a tiny head. I cannot use brushes like this for blush. It's very important the size of your brush, okay? Now, I did so many makeup courses. I know exactly how most women take their product. Most women are heavy handed. They would take the product like this and then you would do like this. Some women do that. Why? Why? Don't blow your bacteria on the brush. Some women might do like quickly like that as if, okay, the excess is out. And then you're smiling because we are being told to smile. And I'm applying this on the apple of my cheek. I look sad. I look like I had a bad day and I was trying to cover it with makeup. Just like you pick your foundation, it has to match with that undertone. If your undertone is more on the yellow side, try to pick those blushes that have a tiny pinch of peach, okay? More rosy peach. This is a cool tone pink. That, that does not help my face. I'm not even talking about the placement, but the color is so wrong. This is beautiful, but it's too light. So in this case, the tone is not right. The undertone is good, but the tone is not right. Meaning it's too light, that's what I meant. It's the right color, but it's too light. So this is the one that I was using in here, and I am planning to use this one in here. This is a strong color as well, but you see it's warmer. It has more of a peach tone to it. I will take a smaller brush. This is my favorite brush for blush. Hakuhoto B110 brush. It's soft as the clouds in the sky would feel. I've never felt those, but just imagine it. Every time I'm applying the blush on my clients, they're like, oh, what is that blush? It's heaven. It is. It's heavenly expensive as well. <gasps> um, you don't have to use this. Let's, 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 you know what? Forget it. I'm done with you. Uh, let's just take a cheaper one. Very happy with Zoeva. Zoeva has great brushes. Please don't complain about brushes. You can find very cheap brushes on Amazon. Good size brush for me. Now I'll take this beautiful color. It's called grapefruit. And even with a little bit, look at my brush. Then here's what I want to do. I want to see what is the result that's going to give on my face. Like, I cannot just put it on my face. I'd rather start with a small amount. So I'm just, just to see pretty much what, you know, what result it would give me on my skin. So this way, when I apply it on my face, I'm not going to be surprised. Now the placement is uh, a whole different story. You don't want to smile when you're applying your blush. I do circle motion, like just a swipe. I barely touch the skin. I stop, I look in the mirror to see like what is the result it's giving me. If I would go lower, it would just make my cheeks drop. In my case, because you know, with each bone structure, it's different, but with my bow structure, I look better if the blush is applied a little bit higher. Wrong color, wrong placement. Right color, right placement. Let's move on with highlighter. And we have uh, beautiful highlighters right here. 
But some colors are good for me and some colors are not. They're all, uh, they're all Dior uh, highlighters. And on my wrong side, I'm going to use this one. This is a beautiful color and it would work if you had a neutral undertone or a cool undertone. But me having a warm undertone, this, does, this doesn't look good on me. I also don't look good with a very warm highlighter. I'll take it with the A23 brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm just going to apply it the way um, I've seen a lot of people doing it. Is this familiar? And, well, you would also, you would also do it. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. This is the wrong color. It's gray. You don't really see it in the video, but it's gray. And this, this makes me want to ring like deet, deet, So we have the highlighter right here. Wrong color. I'm going to take a more warmer tone, something that would match my skin. And I'll take it with this brush. I find it that it works for highlighter. This is a Morphe Y14 brush. And I'm applying the product a little bit on the highest point of my cheeks. A little bit on Cupid's bow. Like this is a beautiful, very subtle highlighter. Of course you can make it look shinier. And you can, and there is nothing wrong with that if this is what you like. But it's the right color. Let's do eyebrows. A lot of women pick the wrong color of eyebrows. My eyebrows and my skin tone is very forgiving, meaning that I could play in between a soft brown, a taupe, a medium brown, a light brown, even a dark brown. All of those colors, I could actually make them work because I don't need a lot of filling. But the worst one that I would use would be something that has a lot of red in it. Like for example, auburn or chocolate. Okay, so I'm going to use chocolate 7B brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Like I said, you might think that this color works. Wait till you see the other one, the good one. And of course, we're going to do the square thing. And I know that on my last video, a lot of you told me like, I have natural square brows. Well, if you already have that, of course, there's absolutely no problem. But when you create it, you can see that there is makeup in there, you know? Hi. Wrong color. Wrong color, wrong shape. Too much. Let's get to the other one. <laughs> For this side, I'm going to take soft brown. By the way, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Bro Pro palette. Let's say I want to make my eyebrows look a little bit thicker, right? Because it's very modern to have thicker eyebrows. So I want to show you how you could do that using just, you know, a lighter color. When you get to the beginning of your eyebrows, just apply less and less product. Babe, do we have scissors? Yes. Can you give it to me, please? Thank you so much. I could not stand that anymore. And this is done with powder. Imagine how it looks like when you're doing it with pomade, like, mm, mm, mm. Let's talk about the eye makeup. You learn from everywhere that you need transition color, that you need, you know, at least two, three eyeshadows to do your makeup. No, you don't. I'm here to tell you that, no, you don't need to use three, for eyeshadows to, to have your eye makeup looking beautiful. Absolutely not. You can use one single eyeshadow that's gonna make your eyes look a little bit bigger if you want that. In my case, I want that. I'll show you the difference between using one eyeshadow and three eyeshadows on my wrong side. I'll just take this palette. It was the first one in uh, my drawer, so. So on my wrong side, I'm gonna use one of those sparkly, then I'll use this one, this darker one. I'll also use this one, the red one. I'll take that red color first. I'll apply it in here. Let's just say you apply it like on the mobile lid, like this. Then, uh, you know what, I'll, let's take the, the darker one and apply it right at the outer corner. Okay, so we apply it in here. Not bad, I would say. 
I see that most women don't like to apply eyeshadow on the lower lash line. They would, you would also apply a little bit of that eyeshadow, the, the dark one, right here, like this. You know, it's how we see. You apply a little bit in here, because you know the deal. Now I'll take the mascara. This is the NARS Climax. It's my absolute favorite current mascara. Most women tell me I like my eyelashes to be like this, more lifted at the end. So they apply a mascara like this, and then also in here. And if you're thinking in here and you're, you're like, okay, this is not bad, I agree, it's not bad. If you like it, there's nothing wrong with it, as long as you like it. This video is for those of you who, who are doing your makeup in the morning and you're like, there's something wrong I'm doing and I have no idea what. This video is for you. If you're thinking that, that's for you. If you're happy with your makeup, you don't need me. Now on this eye, I'm gonna take just one single eyeshadow. I'm not saying that you applying multiple eyeshadows, it's not gonna make you look good. I just want you to see that even if you apply just one single eyeshadow, you could still have a beautiful makeup. I'll just take this one right here. I'm applying it in the crease and also at the outer part of my eye. Basically, the brush, like I'm not even looking in the mirror. The brush real, literally takes you like right under that bone, you have like a hollow and you see the brush kind of guides you through. I'll take a little bit more of that eyeshadow and apply it on my lower lash line where you are afraid to apply eyeshadow. I want to apply just a tiny bit more at the outer corner. What's left on my brush, I'm giving a quick swipe all over the eyelid. Everything in here is just one eyeshadow. The difference be between the way I do mascara and the way you do mascara is the way you hold your hand. Like a lot of women hold their mascara like this. You hold your mascara like this and then you do this. Look at my, look at my hand. It's a little twisted, right? And now I get really, really close to that, the, to the base of my lashes and I'm not moving my head or my arm. I'm just twisting the brush as I'm closing my eye. Look at this. Twisting the brush as I'm closing my eye. I'm not applying mascara on my eyelid. There is no mistake made. And my eyelashes look super long and thick. I twist one place and I twist. Now look at this. I like my eyelashes to be a little bit more like, like this as well. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more mascara on the outer corner. I let it dry. I wait a little bit and then I will apply mascara on my lower lashes so you can see what a difference it makes. We got to the holy lipstick. Whenever I do someone's makeup, when I get to the lips, I always get the same thing. I want a nude. I think who made nude so popular? Was it Jennifer Lopez with the, the, the concealer kind of a lipstick? But she looks good with anything. Like really, whatever you put on that woman, she's gonna rock it. I saw this lipstick color and I was totally like, look how beautiful it is. You look, you would look at this kind of lipstick and you would be like, what is not to like about this? Like, this is exactly what I need. This is the color that I would look amazing with. Mm -hmm. Check this out. This, no. And then you look again at the lipstick and you're like, what is wrong with you? Why is it that you're not working for me? It's not your nude. It's a nude for someone else, just not for you. If it makes you look like you've been dead for two days, Mm -mm. No, it's not your nude. It's someone else's nude, but not yours. Could make it work with a lip liner, but that's a different story, okay? We're talking about simple mistakes that women do. You get the lipstick because it's pretty. 
It has a beautiful color in the packaging and you're thinking, wow, this is exactly the color that I want my lips to have. And then you go home and you apply it and bam, bam, concealer. But just because it's not that color, it does not mean that you don't look good with nudes. You do look good with a nude lipstick. You just have to find the right undertone and the right tone for your lips. Like for me, guys, I look very, I take my example because I'm the model in this video, so I look good with that kind of neutral lipstick that it has a, a pinch of peach, just like the, the blush. On this good side, I'm going to use a nude that actually looks good on me, that doesn't make me look like I'm tired or, you know, dead or... This is a more proper nude for me. It's not a nude for everybody, but it's the right nude for me. We forgot to put the mascara on the lower lashes, so let's do that. So you just see what a difference it makes. You know what, let's put these back. I got them from Mango. This video is not to criticize. Like I said, this video is for those of you who are doing your makeup and you find that there is just something not working, you know? Maybe this video is going to help you. On my last video, I got thousands of emails from women all over the world. India, United States, Italy, Portugal, Mexico, South Africa, Greece, everywhere. People send me messages and told me, how my video changed their makeup game and nothing was the same ever since they saw that video. Of course, I had a lot of criticism. I expected that. I just did not expect people to take it so personal. Like, I do not know you. How can I judge you? I'm here to make you laugh and to teach you a little bit of makeup. To end this uh, video, I hope you realized how important are the colors that you're using and also the placement. And I'm sure that you already knew about the colors and the placement, but when you actually see it side by side, you realize you, it's more like obvious. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'd love to know your opinion about this video. If you're making any of the coloring mistakes that I showed you uh, or the placement, you could also follow me on Instagram. I, I share a lot of tips and tricks and I do my makeup with you a lot of times on Insta stories. So check that out. And if you like these kind of videos, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and press on the ring bell button. This way you're gonna be notified whenever I'm posting a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. We're far from the shallow line. Oh, it's just me. And it doesn't hurt. Like that little, uh, oh shit. I was supposed to do it on the other side. Okay, I'm done. Bye, YouTube.